Hey folks, welcome back to the channel where we can learn from the best investors in the world. And one tool I like to use is this website called Dataroma. If you've ever wondered what are the best investors in the world buying lately, the answer can be found here. This website keeps track of 79 super investors and their portfolios as well as their activities, like what they bought and sold. These are big names, successful investors like Charlie Munger, Carl Icahn, Bill Ackman, Warren Buffett, and a bunch of other really successful investors with impressive track records. These so-called super investors have to provide a 13F filing, which discloses what they sold and what they bought every quarter. It is a little bit backwards looking because they only provide this information 45 days after a quarter, but it's still really useful information to know what the smartest people are doing with their money. So in terms of the second quarter activity, which is the most recent data that we have, here are the top five companies that these super investors added to their funds. First, we have Microsoft, one of the best run companies in the world. This business has a lot of recurring revenue and it's not going anywhere. Year to date, it's down 32%. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with this company or any of the others in this list, but they're just being dragged down with the index because of recession fears and other macro circumstances. At this point, I think Microsoft is a better buy than Apple. And I think this could easily go back up over $300 over the next six to 12 months. Next one on this list is Disney, and this one is down 40% year to date. But again, it's just because of short term reasons, like nobody was going on cruises or to amusement parks for a while, but now everything's opened back up and Disneyland just raised ticket prices. So this is one of those stocks where you might not see it bounce back in the next year or two, but if you hold it for five to 10 years, then you're looking at pretty substantial upside potential. Next one is Amazon, another great company that's also down for the year. But compared to other tech stocks, this one's holding up fairly well. The AWS component of Amazon is growing at 36% a year. And if you ignore the retail side of the business for a second, then just the cloud business alone is generating $22.8 billion a year. Based on the current market cap of Amazon today at $1.09 trillion, that's a PE ratio of about 47, 48 times. A 48 price to earnings ratio is very reasonable for a cloud company that's growing at 36% a year. Just as a comparison, Oracle, another cloud-based software as a service company, has a PE ratio of 30, and this company is expected to grow at just 10% a year. So a lot of investors think that right now, if you buy Amazon at the current price, you're paying 48 times earnings for the cloud business, which is not considered expensive because it's growing at such a fast pace. And then you're basically getting the retail side of the business for free. Next, we have Meta stock, and this one is down 62.5% since the beginning of the year. There is nothing good about this chart here, and it doesn't look like it's found a bottom yet because unlike this area here where it leveled out before falling again, uh, right now it looks like the angle is still towards the downside. So it's possible we could see this stock go all the way down to around the $100 level before it recovers. 17 super investors added this stock in the second quarter. And it's easy to see why. For long-term investors, this looks like a bargain because the P.E. ratio is down to 10.5. If we look at Meta's historical P.E., this is the average annual P.E. ratio throughout the years. And you can see over the last 10 years, it has never gone down to 10. In fact, it has never even gone below 20 until this year. So at a P.E. ratio of 10, this is... The cheapest valuation the stock has been uh, since it went public. And the main question is, do you think the slowdown in the economy and advertisers pulling back is permanent or temporary? Keep in mind that Meta doesn't just own Facebook. About 3.6 billion people every month use their services. And all the revenues combined from all their platforms is over $100 billion a year. So if you think the company will still grow, then this is probably a pretty good time to start averaging into a stock like this. And now the final stock on the list with 24 super investors buying this last quarter, which is more than any other stock. Because as I said earlier this year, Alphabet for 2022 is probably the best stock where you're most likely to get the highest investment return for the risk you're taking. And this is why I based my weekly options challenge on Alphabet. I don't mind getting assigned more and more shares 
as the price drops lower because to me this is a $130 stock trading at less than $100. Year to date, it is down 33%. I've mentioned before the lowest I think this stock can reasonably go down to is in the mid 80s. However, I wouldn't be surprised if right around here, the mid 90s is where we see the bottom. So going back to the Dataroma website, you can see out of all the 79 super investors, the top 10 most owned stocks are listed here, and the top three are Alphabet, Meta, and Microsoft. If you want to dig into any particular investor and what they're holding, you can go into the super investor section. And here we see the top 10 holdings of all these different investors. Now, sometimes they don't even have 10 holdings. Like Michael Burry sold all of his stocks last quarter and he only bought Geo Group, which operates penitentiaries. And apparently that was a pretty good move because the stock market in general is down since the second quarter of this year. However, Geo Group has gone up. This is the six month return. So Michael Burry bought his stock somewhere in the second quarter around here, around the six, six to $7 range. So he famously shorted the housing market during the great financial crisis and has again shown that he knows what he's doing. So a good way to use this page is to find out if a stock you like is held by these super investors. So for example, if I do a search for Google, you can see Alphabet comes up quite a lot. And there are even some people who hold the stock as their first or second highest position. Now, activity is where you can find what the investors did with these stocks over the last quarter. And most of this is going to be for Q2 right now. But next month, we're going to get the new data and these will be changed to uh, Q3. So anything that's in blue here means the investors bought and red means they sold. And if you hover over the tickers, it'll tell you how much they sold or bought relative to the size of their portfolio. The S&P 500 grid, this next tab over here, is a quick way to look at what is the most popular stocks held by these super investors. And right now the top three are Alphabet, Meta, and Microsoft, with 32 super investors owning, to some extent, Alphabet shares. You can also check out the last quarter buys and the last six month buys, so you can see if there's any kind of trend. And the grand uh, portfolio will just give you an overview of all the stocks. You can also search for high conviction stocks. For example, instead of looking at almost 2000 stocks, I only want to look at companies where a super investor has at least, let's say 30% of their entire portfolio in this one company. So that whittles down the number to just 19 stocks. For stocks like Berkshire Hathaway, they're so diversified that it doesn't really matter. But for like Bank of America or Micron or Geo Group, that's Michael Burry there. It shows that some of these investors are quite bullish on these particular names. And then if you click on any of these companies like Bank of America, we can actually see who is holding this stock and how much are they holding as a percentage of their overall portfolio. So we can see Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett, uh, Lilu, Guy Spear. I think these guys all know each other, uh, but they are very confident in their positions with uh, Bank of America stock because they all have at least a 10% holding in this stock. 10% uh, for Berkshire Hathaway. I think that's probably the second largest position, the first one being Apple. Uh, Buffett added a little bit more Apple to his portfolio and increased some positions in oil stocks, it looks like. So how can you use this website and this information to help you invest? Well, I wouldn't recommend just doing the same thing that they're doing because one, you might not have the same investment goals as these super investors, but also this is looking in the rear view mirror because it's what happened last quarter. So what I would do is make a list of all the stocks that I think are interesting and the super investors are buying, especially if there's a lot of them buying the same stocks, like the five names mentioned in this video. And then you can do your own research and do some further digging into these particular companies and try to see why these super investors are interested in these stocks at this time. You can add these handful of stocks to your watch list, have a price target that you think would be reasonable, and when the stock reaches that price, initiate a position and use dollar cost averaging to build up a sizable position over time. If you're not sure how to correctly use DCA, I made a video before here showing how to do that using Microsoft as an example, where I analyze the stock and suggest some price targets. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Take a look at the Data Roma website if you're looking for stock ideas. Good luck with your investments, and I'll talk to you next time.